Hello again, everyone. We're going to be starting a new restoration project today. And after several vintage TV restorations, it's going to be a change of pace. We're going to be doing a Zenith AM clock radio. This is a Model L622G, uh, 1953. Looks to me like a, a gray cabinet. I think that's what the G stands for. We got a lot of issues with this radio that we're going to have to try to figure out what to do with. Uh, two of these shafts are broken off. Uh, the top one is still intact. So we're going to have to figure out something there. The dials, the dials look good on both the radio and on the clock. The clear plastic, they're faded. Hopefully they'll clean up enough where we can reuse them. This gold front looks still looks pretty good. I think if it was cleaned up, it would look nice. Uh, both knobs are there. They seem to be okay, just dirty. Here's the back of the radio and it's intact. We got some screws missing. Uh, we do have a broken corner. Just notice that. But the time set control is there and that's apparently a tone control. It says tone register. It's still there. And we have an extra AC jack to plug another device into. And we got a phono input over here. I'm not sh quite sure what this is on the top of this. Uh, it's not really sticky, but it's it's on there good. I've tried cleaning with just some Windex. It won't phase it. So I think what we'll do, we'll pull the chassis out, get down to just the cabinet, and we'll see if we can get this cleaned up. And then we can get on with trying to restore this radio. So first we'll pull the knobs off. Okay, we got a broken corner here too. And we got a knob there. That's actually a control that's fastened to the back. And that should feed through the hole there in the back. Yeah, this this Phillips is holding something. Not much, but it's holding a little. Okay. Yeah, that's just a tone control. So we can take that loose. Then we got a couple of antenna connections we need to take loose. And I've taken quite a few reference photos, but if you'll notice when I clip these wires to go to the antenna, I left a little bit of the white wire showing there and the green green wire showing there. All right. So I don't know if we can do anything with these broken corners or not, but think about it, see what we can come up with for that. The other two corners are okay, and the rest of the back looks fine. Looks like we have two screws here in the bottom. And we have a quarter inch head screw the top of the dial that has to come out. And the speaker unplugs and we got a dial light that will slide off. Okay. Now something okay 
we've got I think we've got a quarter inch screw at the bottom of the clock. All right, we had to take this cardboard sleeve off of the back of the clock, and it was just fastened with some nuts on it. You can see where one goes. Here's where the other one goes, and another one right there. And now we have a quarter inch screw at the very top. Still need to take the speaker out before we start working on this cabinet, getting it cleaned up. There's a chassis out. Started out with the heavy duty stuff. Uh, this is hand cleaner, with, but it doesn't have any pumice in it, so it won't scratch the plastic. And it does seem to be working. You can see the Q-tip there, how dirty it is. Yep, that'll that'll take it off. I have some of this hand cleaner with the pumice in it. If I knew it wouldn't scratch the cabinet, that would be a lot faster. But we'll just go with this. I'm just putting some on here and kind of letting it soak. I'll do some cleaning. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Well, a little better. Uh, this will need repainting. It's rough. Uh, we'll worry about that later. The dial cover on the clock, it came off with the clock. It just slides on like that. And I have cleaned it a little bit, so I think it'll, it'll work okay. Little, little yellowed, but not enough to hurt anything. So now I'm going to try to take this one out. And it seems to be fastened a little more securely. We've got this, some kind of glue or something over the top of the edges of it. I think we can just chip that off and it should pull off okay. I think there's some Maybe some little push-in type fasteners. Right, one here, here, and over there. Let's see if they'll turn. I think they're just kind of pushed down on that plastic because that one seems to be loose. Yeah, that one's turning too. And they do just push in. popped out pretty easy so so there's a cover pretty yellowed let me clean it up see if it look any better got a couple of labels here on the backs or in the bottom so we don't want to we don't want to destroy them so I guess I'll just be cleaning it with paper towel and toothbrush that's what I've been using We'll get it. We'll get it cleaned off. So now let's let's hook the chassis up, just to see if we get anything. Well, we have a dial light, so that's good. And the clock's running. Now the alarm button works. Well, we have a little activity. Well, we brought it back alive after just cleaning the tube sockets. Great guy though. Yeah. And, uh, so he's doing something. Work. Hope that more artists. He had time for med school. And I did hook the antenna from the back up. I think that helped too. I was getting a weak 
signal and then when I clip the leads onto that it's pretty strong now in the basement if we can get one channel that's that's really good here right now, is that right? it is indeed sir All right, I'm behind. and I don't hear any kind of a buzz in the speaker which tends to tell me that the electrolytics probably okay may change it anyway but I don't I don't really think it's bad so let me let's tip a chassis up and look underneath and see what's going on down there with as far as paper caps anything we need to change and I see four and this one he's he's not doing too much he's kind of spewed out there on the end and we'll change all four of those and we'll check the resistors but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot to do underneath the chassis and here's the tone control it does work needs cleaning like they always do well there's not a lot to do on the radio chassis to get it restored been looking over this clock and we've got a piece right here that apparently was pressed on the shaft when it was new that connects to the rapid alarm off and radio button or switch the radio position pushes this lever right here down or over and that's a manual on and off for the radio and that's where I have it now but watch what happens when I turn it back see this piece it's just floating around in here it's not attached to that shaft at all uh, I can push it back on it looks like it's in the right position and if we pull back on this lever like I thought, this one right here. That makes connection. I was able to push that back down on the shaft. You can see it's down pretty far, as far as it'll go. This is a piece right here. And it's got a hex shape to it slides down on that shaft right there you see one side and there's another side and so far it's working there you can see it hit the switch lever and push it down Maybe if I could clean this off really good and <clears throat> just put a maybe a spot of super glue, let it run down between this lever and the shaft and make it grab a little better, or maybe some epoxy. But right now, it seems to be staying on there and doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, I just decided to go the super glue route. So we've got some of that put around that shaft where that lever attaches. And we've got one more issue here with the chassis. Our dial cord's missing. Here's a tuning shaft right here. And the cord wraps around that. I don't think it's anything really complicated. So have some dial cord here left over from when we were in the TV repair business. We did stereo repair too, so this came in handy. And we'll have to put a little spring of some sort on the tuning wheel to keep tension on the cord. But to get to it, we've got to pull this pointer off. And there's just a couple of quarter inch head screws that hold that plate on. It was really easy, the pointer, just to press fit over that shaft. 
and then there's a bracket with the two screws we took out. Well, that wasn't too complicated. That's the very end. And there's the opposite end. We'll put a little spot of glue on our knots on the dial string. And that'll be taken care of. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Pretty good start on this radio. Uh, it helped that it was playing without doing any any restore on the chassis. But we, we have the dial working now. Nice and smooth. Uh, we hopefully have repaired that clock. We'll see when we hook everything back up. I just have the wires going to that switch jump together now to get the radio to work. We've cleaned the controls, cleaned the chassis off. I haven't checked any of the tubes. I'm sure they're all okay, but we will test those in the next video. And we'll change those paper caps underneath and uh, check the resistors, make sure all of them are within tolerance. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, how about giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thanks.